Before starting this video, I want to let you guys know that Coding Cleverly also has a Patreon page. So go to patreon.com slash coding cleverly and you'll see that there is a Patreon page that is available and you guys could support the channel by just joining any one of these tiers. You guys also could become my patrons. That would also motivate me to provide better and better content. So all you got to do is go to this page and show some love to Coding Cleverly. Enough with the shameless plug. Now let's go to the video. It's coding time with Coding Cleverly. Today we're going to be talking about the bubble sort algorithm. I have a bubble sort.java file created for me right now and you could just see the class bubble sort and then the main method here. Before going into the bubble sort I'm going to first explain what it is and we're going to go also look at a diagram as well. Suppose we have an array and this array is actually unsorted. So in my earlier videos I discussed binary search. So binary search was a searching algorithm that was used when the array was sorted beforehand. To get an array sorted we have to adopt some kind of sorting algorithm. There are so many sorting algorithms out there in the world. The most common ones are like bubble sort, merge sort, quick sort and insertion sort, selection sort. Let's start talking about the bubble sort algorithm. The bubble sort algorithm takes an array of elements and reorders the elements of the input from smallest to largest. Here you have an array that is unsorted and this is what we're going to pass into the bubble sort function. To achieve this, bubble sort works by comparing a pair of neighboring elements and swapping their positions in the array so that the larger of the two elements is always on the right. So here you have two elements here, three and six, and you compare both of them. So you have the index of this and the index of this. We compare the elements in here and we say if the if this is actually larger, but this case, this is smaller. So this goes good for this. Then we go and do this comparison here. Then we do a comparison for this case and we look at the one index and the two index where and we're going to look at the values. So we're going to see if the first index is greater than the second index and if it is we're gonna have to swap it so we're gonna have to swap the six to replace six with the four and we're gonna have to change this four to a six so that's how it's gonna happen and then after that we're going to the other place here so we're gonna check this and we check if the six is larger than this next element and it's next, uh, larger than the adjacent element which is on the right side so we're gonna have to switch it again so we're gonna use the swap method and we're gonna have to change this to two and that to six and then after that we're going to check this and yes we have to change this again so we have to change this to six this to five and i i know this is going to get messy here so six and one so we'll have to change this to one and then we have to change it to six and now you can see that i've swapped it so that means i'm going to have to redo this again from the start and i'm going to do this the next iteration so there's going to be two kind of loops inside here so over here three and four there's uh, this is okay so far four and two well four is greater so we're gonna have to replace this four and we're gonna have to put a two here this is gonna keep swapping and doing stuff until it's sorted like this and once it's sorted in ascending order we're done the algorithm only stops when there are no more values that need to be swapped it's important to note that bubble sort is not the most efficient sorting algorithm bubble sorts worst case runtime is o n squared this is because we are have to compare the current element we are looking at to each element in the array after it. You're gonna repeat this check for every single element in the array. Its best case runtime is O of N for an already sorted array, just like this one. Let's get started with our Java implementation to this algorithm. So before going into the implementation, I wanna discuss some real life examples of bubble sort. Some real life examples of bubble sort are like when you go on a highway and you see that cars are overtaking one another on a single lane. It actually illustrates the working of a bubble sort. Suppose if one car is faster than the other car in front of it, the first car will swap positions and overtake the other one. This might repeat until the fastest car overtakes all other cars in front of it. Just like how the swapping methodology is working in our bubble sort. The best case is when the array is already sorted and you just pass it in. It's just going to take O of N. That's, so that's the best runtime. But there's no use for that. The worst runtime on the other hand is when you give something that is already in descending order. So something that is in descending order, it will take the maximum runtime. And that is O of N squared. Now let's create the bubble sort algorithm. So let's go here and say public and static. Then we have the int because it's gonna return the sorted array, bubble sort like this, BBL sort. And over here, we're gonna take in the input parameter and this is gonna be the input array. And we have to set that to true. Now we have to go with a while loop. Inside the loop, just make the swap variable false so that we don't go into an infinite loop. 
And over here we have to go inside of a inner for loop. Is equal to zero. This is gonna iterate all the way to the length minus one. Input dot length minus one. And then we have I plus plus here and over here. So you might be asking me why we are doing input length minus one. So the reason for that is because we're not going to the last element since we're gonna be asking for another one which is gonna be out of the bound of the array. So we're gonna keep it safe and use the second to last element in the array. And then we're gonna compare it with our other one. So in that case, we're just gonna be safe here. There's an if conditional and it determines if the present index, so value, is greater than the index in front of it. So i plus one. If, if that's the case, we're gonna have to swap stuff. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how the thing looks like right now. So I'm gonna use println and we're gonna use string.format and we're gonna put in swapping and we're gonna say pair percentage D and then this means ints, integer values and then we have the, over here we're gonna put in the integer values. So this one, we're swapping the value with this one and we're swapping the value over here. Done with that line, now we're gonna use the swap method. For that we have to create a swap function somewhere. I'm gonna create a helper function and I'm gonna create it in a separate file because we might be needing swap with other sorting algorithms, not just bubble sort. So I'm gonna create this in a new file here and I call this swap.java. Here we have public class swap and let's just go over what I did over here. So we did a method here which is called swap that takes in an array, it takes the index one and it takes the index two of the two arrays. No, we are not taking the values, we are taking the indices, index one and index two. So over here we create a temp variable that holds the index one value and then after that we replace the value of index one with the value of index two. So index two will equal to the value that was originally in index one. Now after that swap method is done, now we could just safely call this over here. So we could use swap dot swap, add in the input array, pass in the index one and the index two here. So in that case, we have index one and the index two like that. So now let's print the effect. So we'll say arrays dot two string. Now this is a method in the arrays class and we're gonna have to import this. So we're gonna pass in the affected array after the swap. So you can see a red underline here, just hover over it and go and click quick fix and import arrays util. So over here, when I clicked on it, you can see that it imported java.util.arrays for me. Now I don't have the error and I could go to the next line. After I'm done uh, showing the result, I wanna change the swapping variable to true. We are gonna have to make the swapping value to true again. Over here was false. And the reason was that was to avoid the infinite loop. But w whenever you have to do one swap, you have to make sure to do another one. That's the logic here for bubble sort. So you have to do it so that the while loop could run again once more. So we return this sorted array and we could just say input. And there you go, you return the array. Let's do the worst case. Remember like the O of n squared one. So we're just gonna create an array that's called backwards. So it's gonna be called count backwards, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we're gonna pass this inside of our static int bubble sort method. So we don't have to create an object for that because it's static, we could say bubble sort and we pass in the count backwards and here we have backwards. Now what's happening here is that if you could look at this array which is 9876531, the first thing is that we gotta have to swap nine and eight. So we swap nine and eight and you can see eight and nine are over here. Then after that we go here at nine and seven, we gotta swap that, so there you go. Then we gotta swap nine and six then we gotta swap, um, so once nine and six is swapped, we gotta swap six and five, so nine and five, nine and five, then nine and four, nine and three, nine and two, nine and one. So this is happening a lot, eight and seven, and this is happening till the end. So once it's done with two and one, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoa, that was crazy. All right, so now let's put the best case here. So to count forwards, you could just add in this one, which is called count forwards, replace this backwards with the forwards, since there was no swaps done, so that's why we couldn't see the thing. So, so in this case, you would have to use this function here. So the array is count forwards. And now this two string method actually returns the array as a string. So this will be appearing as a string. 
and you have the arrays method imported so this won't give any problems here there you go and there you go so it didn't have to do anything for us because it was already sorted and the it was just it had to go um just linearly go one two three four five six seven eight nine just o of n time and that's it that was the runtime for an already sorted array for the bubble sort give this video a big thumbs up go become a patron for this channel to support coding cleverly and i'll see you guys very soon